Uh, my name is Josh Turner. I did an RU program with National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma, and I did an exchange program with uh, the city, city College in Harlem. And so I was in Norman for three weeks and in New York City for seven. And when I got there, they sent me there because I was originally interested in aerosols and they have a bunch of instruments for remote sensing. So that's why they sent me out there. And then when I got there, he proposed this topic, which was just cloud trajectories and stuff. And I thought it sounded really cool because I knew what the urban heat island effect and stuff was beforehand. So I ran with that. And then once I got started, I used MATLAB to uh, download all of the data. It was from Goes East. And then we used the tracking system that was employed by Meteo France. And what they did was they took 15 minute snapshots uh, of infrared satellite data and they would track them using a geographic overlapping of cells method where every 15 minutes they would see if there was still a cloud nearby and then because of the way that they track the clouds we had to de develop methods to get rid of trajectories that weren't real, <laughs> ones that actually were moving too quick or something had moved into the grid and falsified the trajectory with another cloud or a merge or a split or something along those lines. And so what we did was we took things and we found out speeds from one leg of the tra trajectory to the next and angles from one, one uh, three point part of the trajectory and then to the next. And anything over uh, 90 degrees in angle change uh, in the angle was eliminated. Anything over 50% change in speed was eliminated. And then anything under five images was eliminated immediately. Now five images translates to how much time? An hour and 15 minutes. That seems like a long lived convective Very long. to me. I'm not sure yeah. exactly what, I wouldn't say element, but you know, that's a long lived tower. Do they, is that common in New York City, the area you were looking at? Uh, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> how many cases did you have? There were five. Um, in the end, there were 53,000 for the entire month of May 2009. 53,000 with, with over an hour long. Over, over an hour and 15 minutes. That's in the entire grid space. We call these convective cloud trajectories. And, yeah. Uh, uh, how big a, a cloud did it have to be? I mean, was there size or intensity of temperature differential? What were the the model like uh, resolution, I'm not too sure on. But all I know is the data that I was given was uh, it had cloud top temperature, cloud base temperature. Uh, actually, it did have area, like cloud uh, like how much area the cloud took up. And what else did it have? I think it might have had thickness as well, like a height. I guess it uh, you had the lower and upper. Yeah, so but it, it yeah. calculated it for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, wait, what was I saying? Well, we were trying to figure out uh, how Oh, yeah, convective. These, yeah, these big, how big these convective. Yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure they're only single cell, so they wouldn't be very large. They'd, yeah. yeah, they would be pretty small. So the satellite can pick that out, though. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Medio France thinks it can pick up. Uh, certainly, yeah. yeah. There was another paper, too. It was uh, Moral et al. And it was in 2000, and I don't have it on there, do I? Maybe I do. You do have an interesting do. trajectory. 2001. There was one trajectory here you're showing where the thing doubled back, and you threw that one out. Yeah, exactly. Well, we kept the first part, because this is just like moving in a straight line, and then this one, I think this is like the last part of it, when we would think something else had come in and the satellite had picked up on it and assumed that it was the same cloud, when it's not. I having done a study like this, knowing that, you know, it's not perfect, you got to throw out a lot of data yeah. and stuff, uh, was that a shock to you, that how much you had to throw out? Yeah, because the research that I had done previously was just plotting what had already been synthesized and the data was already set up for me, and then when I got this, after the, the initial cut with the, the five images, half of the, <laughs> the trajectories were already gone. And I was like, well now, I went from 100,000 trajectories to 50,000 in about a minute. <laughs> so now my sample size is half of that. So it was, yeah, it was kind of, it was shocking actually. A moment of alarm as yeah. the numbers get Because then it was like, hmm, there's that many. Oh, and then after the cuts when, with the angle and the speed, there were even more. So then, <laughs> like, the tracking program, you're like wondering, hmm, is it really is it really working out too well? But yeah, I guess it's imperfect data. So what's your next next research project gonna be? Is it gonna be algorithm development? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, perhaps. <laughs> It'd be pretty cool.
But yeah, I don't know if it's going to be anything with this. I know my uh, my uh, graduate student advisor at UM, at the University of Miami, he wants to do a model comparison paper with the stuff I'm doing now, uh, the aerosol research. He like uh, is looking at black carbon and Saharan dust in the ITCZ, and then looking at two different models because we're looking at precipitation in the region and how maybe black carbon has an effect because of all the slash and burn activity in the tropical uh, part of Africa. So hopefully I'll get my name on that paper, maybe like third author or something. All right, but well, yeah. best of luck on that. Thank you. Thanks.